Okay, so this is going to be a relatively swift video on how to properly get Bluetooth integrated into a uh, Mercedes-Benz Audio 10 CD. Uh, this in particular is the Alpine version. So there's also a Becker, I believe, version of this. This is made in Japan. There's versions made in Hungary and I think France, anyway. I'm not sure how different they are on the inside. I do not have schematics for this, unfortunately. Uh, the board is is quite nicely labeled though, so at least there's that. Uh, in the previous video, I've actually connected the Bluetooth output directly into the amplifier. And so you would have to have the radio muted in order for it not to also feed its own signal into the amplifier. Now that works fine and that applies to, so that I'm, I'm going to let that video up because that applies to any radio in which you're, you're unable to acquire to, to basically inject your signal the way I did it here. I've done it here. Um, so that basically is a, a plan C whereby if all else fails you could definitely get that done. The problem is you do not have any volume from the radio and it's quite annoying, right? I have actually used it and it's it's not, I don't know, yeah, you can, you can get by with it, but it's a pain in the ass, right? So you, you have a cool tune come up, you want to bump it up, and nothing happens, right? You just start having radio superimposed to your music, so, right? And also, if you want, if you have unbalanced speakers in your car and you need a fader, whereby some speakers get a higher, a higher amplitude, um that'll also not work so all the equalizer also equalizer right bass treble you can actually get those programmed into the csr 8645 but the problem is it'll only work with either iphones or android phones pretty sure it's not going to work with both i don't have an android phone so i can't really test that out but on android phones uh if you skim through a song so fast forward or stuff It'll make crackling noises, so the equalizer module, the, the Kalimba DSP, has some bugs in it. Um, so yeah, that's that's not uh, applicable. And the equalizer on these is very smooth, sounds very nice. Anyway, so uh, the way shit's set up now is... Let's uh, get the iPad up and running. Let's get the settings up. Uh, Bluetooth. So it's uh, formally paired, but right now the Bluetooth module is off. Get some Radio Bob going. Um, so radio works fine, AM works fine, um, CD changer works fine if you have the D2B connector in the back. Also both sound systems, whatever, should work fine with this. This has nothing to do with it. What I do basically now is I add my Bluetooth signal to the audio coming out of the CD module. Right? And so I have a CD which has a silent track on it. Uh, I actually have a few versions of these, so I started naming them. Uh, what's very crucial is um, it's getting a 650 megabyte disk. At least my uh, unit absolutely cannot handle the 700 megabyte disks at all whatsoever. Just can't do it, right? And um, so once you get the 650 megabyte disk, everything is fine. Uh, exactly, so you have the, the radio going, and uh, let's say you hit play on your phone. I'm going to use my iPad because I am filming with the phone. Um, go to CD, and it should steal the music. Exactly, and now you have your music on your radio playing on my little tiny test speaker uh, and you have an equalizer right so that is what is very good about this and fader and balance right so by the way the radio sounds super perfect it's just the speakers weak shit um, that's pretty much all with the demo right the moment you go to FM uh, it actually keeps the Bluetooth module on so you'll have to you'll have to pause your music in this case but if you turn the radio off it does turn the bluetooth module off and it'll automatically play, uh, pause your music see it just did it all right um and again next time you power it on if it's fm it's not going to power the bluetooth module on which is very useful because otherwise right you're on a phone call you start the car up it steals the audio it, eh, it's a pain in the ass 
Optionally, you could get a microphone on this. I don't, so my module doesn't advertise itself as a hands-free module, as a hands-free capable device. But there's a bug in iOS, at least 11.3, up to 11.3, whereby if you're on a speaker, if you're on speaker on a call, and this connects to it, the speaker turns off, right? So you have to. It's it's annoying, right? So it's best just to have this on when you want to play music. So hit play on your phone, CD. You're up and running. All right, so now let's uh, quickly go over how I've connected the stuff, what the connection points are. So this should be right, most of the work, right, 99% of the work was finding the, the best way of, of doing this. Now with, uh, with this video, right, you'll, you'll see the exact connection points, and this should be a relatively straightforward job. So let's uh, take this apart. So the front plate falls off in this module, in this uh, model stereo, because it's uh, screwed in. And um, right, it has these two screws, so that's not a problem, I'll put that back. Uh, so exactly, this is what you want to do. Let's uh, turn off the power just in case some shit does happen. Um, so you're going to want to take 5 volts from these two points here. I will actually add a, an image right now, actually on screen. Uh, so on the left, right above the uh, one of the CPUs, you'll have these two connection points that I've soldered to. One is uh, the left one is plus five volts, and the right one is uh, ground. And on the right side, you'll see these uh, thicker, bit thicker tracks. Right, you have the super thick one in the middle that is ground. And then right before the resistors that go into the capacitors, we have the left and right channels. Uh, in this case, uh, the gray wire, so the right... I've actually written it down on the capacitors now that I, uh, that I look closer. So the right one is the left channel and the left one is the right channel. Always has to be the other way around. And uh, coming back to the uh, actual video, you'll see that I have an extra wire going and this uh, emanates from this comes from <laughs> emanates yeah uh, this comes from the mute signal going to the uh, cd uh, basically driver so i think this drives the motor and the uh, the laser focusing coils and this has a mute signal basically i don't know pauses the chip helps it uh, use less electricity i suppose um and you could basically uh, steal that signal and use it as an indication of whether the CD is is playing or not. Again, after you pause it, it'll stay powered on, right? So you have to turn the radio off completely for that to be muted. But once you play, uh, right? You, you I, I've said this shit before. Anyway, so this goes on to a. Uh, let's actually go back to the video. This. Um, you probably see there's a MOSFET uh, glued onto the uh, back of the Mornson DC-DC converter. Let's see if I can actually zoom in a little bit, make this a bit more comfortable. Um, exactly, and that's pretty much all I'm doing, right? This is an NPN MOSFET, so that's pretty much all there is there. And that basically enables or disables the Bluetooth module. And that's how I get uh, basically the functionality that it's off when you're in FM mode and you're just using the, the radio as in, in non-Bluetooth mode. Uh, again, I'd recommend uh, sticking down these wires, right? Because in an automobile, you'll have quite a bit of vibrations depending on the uh, situation and you really don't want to rip off tracks on this PCB, right? It's a pain in the ass to, and there's no schematics on it. With that said, um, that's pretty much all. Any questions, leave them down in the comments and keep them in mind. Again, you need a 650 megabyte CD, definitely, for this to work. Uh, if you need some, I, I did buy a pack of 100, so hit me up in the comments. Uh, we can get something done if you really need one. All right, have a good one, guys.